G'day, g'day. How are we today? Beautiful day in Tambarura. Uh, my name's Job Drinkwater. I'm uh, born and bred in this area of Hill End. I've uh, known out of pan since I was in nappies. And I was uh, born about a kilometre up the road there at uh, Walter's Cottage where Mavis used to live. And I now live half a K that way uh, at Red Hill where uh, a lot of good gold was found back in the 1800s and is still being found today. I, uh, I do gold panning tours, hill end tours is my, uh, my little business that I run. It is a hobby sport, you know. As I tell everyone that comes gold panning with me, I can hardly make myself filthy rich with gold, let alone you guys. But the great thing with, uh, with fossicking in the creeks is that nine times out of ten, we do wash up uh, a bit of colour. Uh, I do have some things here just to quickly go over today, but uh, I really just wanted to let you guys know that I feel like I've been dragged out into the spotlight a little bit through uh, popular demand. As I've been doing these tours the last four years or so now, I, uh, I feel like I'm a little bit of a, a diamond in the rough as uh, I don't get out in the spotlight much and I try not to, but uh, without trying to offend too many people, I am the real deal. Uh, people that come gold panning with me, we do find colour. It is very rare to wash up nuggets, very rare to wash up nuggets, but at the same time, it does still happen. Uh, I've got a bit of gold here that I show everyone that comes gold panning with me. And uh, if you guys do come on a tour, you get to see this brilliant color I've got in the pan here. And uh, many, many people have taken pictures of it and claimed that they have found it, but no, it is mine. And I have found all of this. There's about $250 worth in the pan here. And, uh, as I say, very rare, but it is still out there. But uh, unfortunately today, I can only give you guys a little bit of a glimpse of that. And as I say, if you come on a tour with me, we get down in the creek, we get in the water, and we have a splash and we have a lot of fun. This uh, beautiful little item I'm using here is called a pelican pick. It's used by the diggers in the 1800s as well. It's a pick and a shovel in one. Really good instrument for getting a bit of gold and colour. I'm going to just give you guys a little bit of a teaser of what it's like to, uh, to come on a tour with me and, uh, and how gold works basically. I mean, as I tell everyone, if I knew where the gold was, I'd already have it. It'd already be in my pocket and I'd be living on an island somewhere, uh, flying around in my private jet, but life isn't like that. So there's a lot of educated guessing that's, uh, that's involved. And we go off a lot of the physics of it, you know. Uh, these are again some of the tools I use We've just gone over the pelican pick, but there are many other different ways of looking for gold You've got to be versatile at any rate It's basically sprinkled throughout the hills and throughout the erosion and the uh, gold's really really heavy When I say really heavy, I mean it's twice the weight of lead and it's the second heaviest thing in the world So it's heavy and when it rains really hard through storm the storm and the rain batters the land and all heavy things want to go to the bottom, yeah? So the gold is washed off the hills and ends up in the creeks where us fossickers can have our chance at glory. Now again, a lot of luck involved, so I've got a dollar coin here as a great example. Just in case I don't find any colour right now, at least I can find the dollar coin and you'll understand the concept of uh, how to pan. And basically, uh, there are a few main steps involved, but it is a teaser, so I can't go over too much with you guys. But at any rate, hopefully I get some colour in this pan, and you guys can see the bit of the process that happens. With me, when you come panning, uh, I really do coach you through all of the steps and uh, stick with you. And uh, sometimes I've got a couple of mates that come down and give me a hand because it is your land and uh, it is good fun fossicking and looking for some colour. Back in the 1800s in this area we had a lot of history and a lot of gold. I, uh, I grew up at History Hill as mum and dad owned that place and uh, it's just a bit of general knowledge. I do have a bit of history up my sleeve in the area. Again, Tambarura is this area. Back in the 1800s we had thousands and thousands of people spread right across this land, right back to Hill End and Hawkins Hill, down into the Turon. It would have been a really booming town and they were all here looking for gold. Everyone. Doesn't matter what their job was or their entitlement at the time. They'd be a priest, a publican, anyone. 
looking for gold. It's all we were here for. You may think I've lost the dollar coin. Gold's heavy and it's also money. Just like the dollar coin, the dollar coin's heavy and it's money. Bit too much water in there, you don't need that much when you're going for the, the look. And that can be tricky, I know I make it look easy, but I've been doing it for a long time. So if there was any gold in that pan, it would be around where that dollar coin is because it's nice and heavy and look at that, woof. Nice, wonderful bit of colour there. See, it's got that nice yellow metal look to it. You know, gold's a metal. It's not a rock. You can see all that sandy stuff there. Wonderful bit of colour there. Put it all together. Wonderful. The great thing uh, about panning is that with the skill, you can basically go to any creek in the world and find the heavy stuff. It's not always gold, it's the heavy stuff. Sometimes it's antiques, coins, jewelry. Uh, the list can go on. You, you know, you're not gonna strike it rich all the time, but that's what we're all chasing, is that possibility of striking it rich. Again, uh, it's very rare to wash up nuggets in the creek. You won't ever wash up anything like this. This is found with the metal detector. Again, there are different ways of looking for gold. With metal detecting, you're gonna, you know, find a lot of metal first before you find anything really worth it. But you stay persistent and uh, persistence wins. But uh, you can wash up finer nuggets in the pan and uh, it can get uh, very exciting. I've had people with me find all sorts of different things. I've found, uh, again, I, I seem to be finding more people things than I find myself, but that's the job. One person with me washed up a gold ring once. I'm not making it up. Right behind me we were digging. Took off about four feet of gravel to get down to the bedrock. And we are right in the heart of the gold fields of Tambarura here. And uh, we were all struggling to get a bit of colour. And uh, one fella just in a group of ten. And he just piped up and he just went, I have a gold ring in my pan. Anyway, they live in Sydney. And uh, they called me back about a week later. And uh, they said, hey Job. You were right, it is antique. Uh, we came from an antique uh, valuer and he dated it at 1905 by German design, 18 karat gold. So the ruby on top was perfectly cut, no less than $1,000. So again, it's not always gold. But this school holidays, I've had a fair few people with me wash up a, a few little nuggets. I don't guarantee this type of a thing. I say to everyone, it's a lot like fishing. You know, there's a lot of luck involved. But at the end of the day, you can still get a nice bit of colour if you just keep trying using your wits. I've washed all that stuff up only about 100 metres down the creek. So uh, I'll make sure everyone gets a really good look at that when they come panning with me. There's about $250 worth there and about three grams in the pan of all nice, natural, real gold and treasure.